decides, it divides into two different organization, organizations. One that sees it as its task to provide funerals and other services for money to anyone who asks for them. The other aimed at preserving the teaching handed down from Shakyamuni Buddha to Dogen Zenji to us. One day it might happen that the temple where I am abbot, Antaiji, will break free from the dead frame of the Soto school and walk its own way. We need some fresh air, not the smell of dead rituals and dirty money. So, uh, uh, Shohaku Okumura again, uh, he said that this attitude, apparently transgressive, that uh, he, he felt from uh, Sawaki Roshi and Uchiyama Roshi, that was what attracted to him in the first place to, to Zen, uh, when he was a 20-year-old student in the 60s, he wrote in the introduction of the teachings of Homeless Code. The most important point I learned from it was that both Sawaki Roshi and Uchiyama Roshi were free of the worldly system of values, and yet they were walking in a very clear direction. I was skeptical of the paths recommended by my parents, teachers and Japanese society, so I couldn't find a life uh, that made sense to me. If I hadn't encountered Sawaki Roshi and Uchiyama Roshi and through them Dogen Zenji and Shakyamuni Buddha, it might not have been possible for me to live my life positively, positively with an unshakable direction. Uh, and in my own case, like this uh, apparently transgressive attitude, uh, like beyond normal morality and critical in some ways, it was something that also, it was one of the things that attracted me to Zen. For some reason, in my whole life, I'm being, I've, I've been very critical of uh, institutions, of uh, things. Uh, I, I've been, I've made kind of like a habit of questioning many different things. And, uh, but one interesting thing, there is one saying in Brazil that when you point a finger at others, you, at the same time you, you point three fingers at yourself and one to God. So when you were critical to others, you end up being critical to yourself too. Uh, and one interesting thing related to this happened uh, last year here in Antaiji. Uh, it was in the end of... Uh, Autumn, and you, all you guys remember all the issues that uh, happened re related to First Monk, all the, the things that happened, and in that moment something uh, really interesting came to me, uh, because most of my life I've been criticizing people for being like zombies somehow, I've always felt that most people that I knew they, they were not really alive, they were not uh, living with intensity, they're not transmitting some passion into everything they did. Uh, so for me, people, most people that I knew, they were not hot, they were not cold, they are just like lukewarm. They were not really, for me, they were like half death, half dead, they were like zombies. So, but, but okay, and then we, I was here in Antaiji for more than six months, something like this, and then the first monk issue came, and then dojo -san started giving us some lectures, some kind of scolding us about uh, uh, and, the do and the first monk thing was just like a prick text, I think. He said that he was feeling that our practice was not like as if our heads were on fire, quoting Dogen. And he also said that we should practice as if we were like robbing a bank or going out for the first time with a beautiful woman who we are in love with. So for me that was very interesting because I realized at that moment that what I had been criticizing most of my life was also me. Because uh, anti-Gi uh, life uh, can be hard sometimes, can be, you have a lot of responsibilities, not so much time to sleep, so sometimes you end up retreating into yourself. You, you start to, at least me, uh, happen a few times. You start like, uh, sometimes it's too much, so you start just like going to yourself, going to that safe solitude that we can all, we always, or some people, they retreat when they are uh, in many different moments in life. I think there is, it's one of the human tendencies. This, and also, another guy wrote something very similar to this during the introduction, a guy who was Tenzo in Tassahara, I forgot his name. Uh, I think Daniel, no, I forgot his name. But anyway, uh, so I, I, 
at that time when Docho san gave us these lectures, I had been criticizing myself, but most of the times I was just hiding it from myself. That sometimes I was not putting my total being in everything I was doing. I there's even uh, the the story of Dogen and his teacher when uh, Dogen was still studying with his teacher in China uh, and it was a very tough routine. I think they did the Zen until 11 and they woke up at 2 a.m. every day. It was something like this. And many monks were often sleeping. And the teacher of Dogen was uh, often scolding them, saying, Come on, guys, what are you doing here? You people in the world, they are doing all their jobs. People, and you gave up that to come here study, to study Buddha Dharma. And here you're just sleeping. What are you doing with your lives? And uh, I really, uh, so th I think that was very something very similar that Docha san was telling us. We all came here to Antaiji, and sometimes we're just practicing like uh, just we're not putting all of ourselves. They're just putting half. And and for me that was something that uh, that that I really felt. And I think this is also what happens when you're you're very critical. You can also sometimes get to see yourself uh, because you, I think this kind of practice that we have here, I think uh, many people when they look for a spiritual path, they're usually suffering somehow and they want to, to be comforted. So I think that's why many people get to Antaiji and they get really shocked when they're not comforted. I think uh, because I think the teaching, uh, the type of teaching that Zen is and is a teaching that really shows you who you are and truth. The truth is often hurts, it's often inconvenient. And I think a real teacher and a real teaching usually they show you for who you are and that's not always nice. That's why many people they get surprised and they get shocked with this type of teaching. And I think not only our teacher Docho-san but our teacher Zazen is a lot like that too. Uh, one of the first books that I read on Zen was by Deshimaru. I know Kanda-san told me Deshimaru is not well seen in Japan because he didn't get uh, Dharma transmission from Kodo Sawaki. But anyway, it was one of the first books and I got this quote from that book, which uh, at that time really was interesting for, for me because I was feeling that. Uh, Deshimaru said in, this in that book, through, uh, through the practice of Zazen, one can become more and more profoundly aware of one's weak points, bad sides, and I don't mean in terms of morality only. You cannot lie to yourself. That is confession. I keep practicing Zazen, now he's quoting someone saying, I keep practicing Zazen and the more I practice, the more I see that I am the worst creature on earth. If you understand that, then you are becoming truly profound. If you understand your ego objectively, you are like a god. That is the highest dimension. During Zazen you can understand. It is not necessary to confess to other people, only to yourself. That is the best confession. A person who is really crazy and cannot, cannot understand that he is crazy. Uh, no, a person who is really crazy cannot understand that he is crazy. But a madman who understands that he is mad is not so crazy. One other example of this kind of realization was just a simple thing that Cyrus told me last year. Uh, we were talking after five days session, and I asked him, so how was it for you? And then he said, for me, it was like a big mirror. You saw everything and you could not hide. So it was very hard, he was saying his Cyrus way of saying. So I think it's the same thing that uh, the Shimada said. And so going back to the text, and Dogen, he co quotes a poem here in the, in the part that I have just read. And I'm going to read it again, and I'm going to read from another translation from the Tom Wright. He also translated Tenzo Kyokun together with the commentary by Uchiyama, How to Keep Your Life. And I think the translation by Tom Wright here is maybe easier to understand, so I'm going to read from it now. That's uh, what I just read, but in a different translation. So, this is the poem. As an ancient teacher has said, Two-thirds of our days are already over, and we have not practiced clarifying who we are. We waste our days in chasing satisfaction, 
so that even when called, we refuse to turn around. How regrettable. So I think that uh, this poem uh, summarizes most from what I just read from this, the, this part from Tezo Kyokun. So, because in, in, in this text, Dogen is saying that uh, uh, using the example of this Tenzo, that we are wasting our lives if we are not really giving ourselves to the task of Tenzo, which for him is also the same as practicing the Buddha Dharma. Uh, so, but then one question uh, might come, but why do we need to clarify who we are? Why it's not a pro why is it a problem to waste our time? And why is the present moment so important? Like somebody might ask him. And if I'm not wrong, I think uh, there was a Teisho by Docho san last year uh, when he was reading or talking about something very similar to, to this poem. And uh, Simon, the Canadian, he asked a question uh, about this. And, uh, and then after Mui answered, and I think there was a discussion between Docho san and Mui for a long time about this. I might be wrong, but my memory from it is that uh, Mui was asking these questions that I just asked now, but why is the present moment so important? Why do we, we cannot waste our time? And, and the reason Mui was giving, if I'm not wrong, is that uh, he said something, but everything is permanent, everything is connected, and everything, uh, there is no one uh, self that uh, stays forever, so why should we really struggle into really being present in every moment and there was a very very interesting discussion and I think uh, this discussion uh, it's uh, maybe one of the biggest paradox of uh, of life one, one, ex one answer to this question is uh, was given by Trungpa Rinpoche the Tibetan Buddhist teacher there's a book of his in the library called Crazy Wisdom and, and he said exactly because everything is impermanent uh, every moment is unique, like no two moments are the same. So that's why it's so beautiful. We have only one chance, like uh, also with every person we meet, like they're gonna go. So we have only that opportunity and, and that's uh, why he says that uh, living every moment, it's so important. And then I think Uchiyama in How to Cook Your Life, he, he uses a similar way of thinking, he says that everything you, you encounter, everything you meet is your life. Every moment, it's all you have. So the best way to live is to really give yourself to it. And I think uh, the work of the Tenzo, it's, uh, it's also a metaphor. It's, it's also, they really mean working as a Tenzo, but it's also a metaphor of how working with Tenzo, you can live, express that type of living. Uh, and, but going back to this uh, contradiction of the of why do we really need not to waste our time, uh, I think uh, there's one uh, interesting co quote by Uchiyama Roshi in Opening the Hand of Thought. He quotes from the early scriptures known as the Agamas, and he says the following, Truly seeing the aggregation of the world, the view of non-existence, does not arise. Truly seeing the non-substantiality of the world, the view of existence does not arise. The view that all things exist is, is one extreme. The view that nothing exists is another extreme. Being apart from these two extremes, the Tathagata teaches the Dharma of the middle way. Because this exists, that exists. Because this arises, that arises. I think this is a very complicated uh, paragraph and I had to read many times to understand it. But, and also, the, the, in the next paragraph, uh, Uchiha Maroshi, he explains it, and it, it, make, it gets easier to understand. But for me, this is like one of the most interesting things I've read, or that I've heard of. Uh, and I think what is his, he's trying to say here is that uh, just seeing permanence, it's one extreme. And just seeing how cause and effect exists is another extreme. So... What is he saying that even though like everybody's gonna die, everything is changing at every moment, everything is a flow, there's nothing that really stays the same because we, we, we're changing all the time, even though there is impermanence, if you just see impermanence, you are 
going you're being one sided at the same time if you just see that things are uh, because you also you're just seeing one side because we're alive and we, we are here and even though it our own self m m might be an illusion at the same time we have feelings and we have responsibilities so i think seeing only permanence and we also have the present moment so only seeing permanence maybe it's a one-sided point of view but also if you only see cause and effect and if you only see that things exist that's another extreme because you it might get too attached to, to not only to things but maybe to your own ideas your ideologies your ways of thinking so one in how to cook your life which uh, i think he approaches the same uh, question the same issue but with uh, more easy examples more mundane examples so he he gives two caricature uh, caric uh, I forgot how to say in English, but two examples of two guys. So one guy is a young guy who is really aware of impermanence, that he's gonna die, that everybody...